Hello, this is group number 4 with Tanim Samo and Prima Kinshuk. We will be performing practical number 3, measurement of slip of an induction motor. Slip refers to the relative speed between the rotating flux and the rotor. It is not possible for rotor to run at the synchronous speed for an induction motor, so the difference between the speed of the stator and the actual speed of rotor is called slip. For an induction motor, it is essential to have slip in order to have relative motion between the rotating magnetic field produced by the stator and the rotor conductors. No relative motion would mean that there is no induced EMF or current, so there would be no torque produced in that motor. Mathematically, it can be expressed as the following equation, where ns is the synchronous speed and n is the actual speed. The first method is the actual speed method. The motor speed is actually measured using the tachometer and the slip is then calculated using the equation given below. The second method is by using the rotor frequency method. Since the rotor frequency is very low, the frequency can be found by inserting a galvanometer in the rotor circuit. In our case, we have used a center zero DC microammeter as a galvanometer. Then the rotor frequency can be determined by counting the number of complete oscillations made by the pointer of an ammeter from its zero position. We can then calculate the slip by using the relation given below. The third method is by using the stroboscopic method. For our practical, we have used a stroboscope meter, which are straightforward, portable, and manually operated instruments used to measure theoretic or rotating motion. There is no physical contact with the shaft while using this method, and the purpose of the stroboscope is to make the rotating shaft appear motionless by synchronizing or flashing light with it. While conducting this practical, we must ensure to follow these following precautions. Number one, ensure that the connections are tight and correct. Number 2. Do not connect the galvanometer at the stator side. Number 3. Verify the circuit connection before supplying power. Number 4. Ensure that the materials are of appropriate rating. Materials required. The first method is done by using a tachometer. For the actual speed method, we will be connecting the circuit as shown in this diagram. A three-phase supply will be given to the stator side, where the stator will have one emitter connected in series and a voltmeter connected in parallel. As for the rotor side, it will be short-circuited. By supplying the power from the variable supply with the red, yellow, and blue phases. Then we will connect it in series with the emitter and then provide it to the stator side. Lastly, we are putting the both meter in parallel connection. From the tachometer, we got the synchronous speed is 1475 rpm, and when we calculated the slip, we got it as 0.0915, which we rounded it off to 0.092. The second method is using a galvanometer, the rotor circuit frequency method. In the rotor side, we will be using a center zero DC microammeter as a galvanometer.
We found the rotor current frequency by counting 10 cycles and noting down its time period. Then in order to find slip, we divided our rotor frequency by the stator frequency. Stator frequency is 50 Hz, so after putting our values, we found an average slip of 1.7%. The next method is the stroboscopic method. The connection of the induction motor for this method is same as that of the actual speed method. However, in this one, we use a stroboscope meter to measure the speed. Similar to the actual rotor speed method, we are giving the rated voltage to the induction motor. Then the stroboscope. After finding the speed of the motor using the double line and the single line stroboscopic meter method, we were able to get an average slip of 0.0915. From this practical, we can conclude that the measurement of slip can be done using the tachometer reading of an actual rotor speed, the galvanometer reading of the rotor current frequency, and the stroboscopic method. The values of slip for all these methods were close to each other except for the galvanometer whose value deviated further from the other two. However, this practical validated the use of any three of these techniques to measure the slip of an induction motor. This is all for our practical today, so thank you for listening. This is Dan and Somo signing off.